Hello students, I hope you are all fine and in good health. In this audio presentation, I will be discussing some of the major themes uh, from the summer of the beautiful white hearts, uh, snapshots chapter number one. Along with that, I will be discussing some important major characters from this same chapter. Uh, apart from that, I will be uh, discussing a bit related with the message that we get from this particular story. So dear students, as you can see, at the very top I have written the summer of the beautiful white horse. Then in the next line I have written snapshots chapter number 1. So uh, dear students, let's start. So at first as I told you, I will be discussing a bit regarding the major themes that we find in this particular chapter. The first important thing is that this particular story dealt with refugee communities. Okay, refugee Armenian communities, Garaglinian tribe. Uh, it is a part of the Armenian tribe. It is actually a refugee tribe. So let us come to the first point related with the major themes the loneliness and poverty faced by expatriate communities living miles away from their homeland. The loneliness and the poverty that we find in case of the Garaglinian tribe members who uh, are now living far away from their homeland. That is the reason I referred to the Garaglinian tribes as the refugee community. Next important theme that we find in this particular chapter, the concepts of honor and theft by Aram, Morat, the tribe and John Bairo. Because uh, for the past 11 centuries, the Garaglinian tribe was famous for their truthfulness and honesty. But Morat was the one who had stolen the horse from John Bayro, but later out of guilt, uh, stricken conscience, he and Aram decided to give it back to its rightful owner. And we know the rightful owner was John Bayro, an Assyrian farmer. Now I am moving on to the third important theme, the lure. Lure actually means the attraction the lure of a desire in the face of poverty and binds of tradition because poverty was on one hand on the other hand they had a rich tradition related with being very much honest and truthful but at the other hand there is desire also desire to enjoy something and that can be seen in the free spirit of morat now talking about free spirit, the next theme is traditions and free spirit, the conflict and the triumph of one. Obviously, uh, there in this particular story, if we critically analyze it, we will find that there is a conflict, ongoing conflict between tradition and free spirit. Free spirit is represented by Morat and tradition and culture these things are represented by the author aram another important theme rise above personal desire to take a mature decision obviously because the personal desire of morad and aram was to keep the horse for a longer period of time and to enjoy riding but finally when they had interacted with john byro and as i referred already that it actually aggravated their guilt-stricken conscience. They felt guilty from inside. And finally, Morad and Aram, they had taken a mature decision. They uh, gave the horse back to its rightful owner. Next important theme, the impact the story has due to a child narrator. The narrator of this particular story is a nine-year-old boy and the name of the boy is Aram. The relationship between the two brothers, that is also a very important theme 
the concept of insanity sensitivity to the environment and guilty pleasures these are some other themes that we find in this particular chapter now i am moving on to the major characters first and foremost the most important character is aram aram is actually the 10 year old cousin of morat and remember one thing the entire story has been narrated by aram who had always been conscientious of his tribe's reputation for integrity he was always aware and he was very proud to state it to the uh, listeners and also to the readers that their tribe is famous for integrity their tribe is famous for truthfulness and honesty fascinated with horses since he was a child he knew in his heart that morad had practically stolen the horse but justified the action by claiming that it wasn't stealing unless morad sold the horse for monetary gain and he was very much sure of the fact that neither morad nor he will sell the horse at any cost they won't be selling the horse so there is no question of any monetary benefit there is no question of any economic gain was jealous of the bond more are shared with the horse and hope to have the same connect with the horse some day now we find that when morad was riding the horse there was no problem as such it was a smooth riding but when aram decided to ride on the horse he fell down from the horse and the horse jumped over seven vineyards now uh, when morad was riding the horse at that time there was no problem that was the reason the younger being the younger brother aram felt very jealous of morad found a way to keep the horse even when he found out that john byro was the owner now when he got to know when the narrator got to know that john byro was the actual owner of the horse at that moment also later when he went to the house of morat he told that that the actual horse belonged to john byro but he decided he told morat to keep the horse for some more time but morat decided to give it back since we see the story unfold from a child's perspective in a sense honesty and unbiased qualities added to the narration remember very carefully dear students since the story is narrated from the point of view of aram honesty innocence and unbiased quality is finally added to the narration now morat another very important character considered crazy insane whimsical and a direct descendant of uncle kosrov by blood he is not connected with uncle kosrov but spiritually and in terms of their behavior and antics both of them are very much identical both of them i mean to say both morad and uncle kosrov morad seemed to have a special way with animals and even with farmers or we can say people because he dealt very tactfully with uh, john byro when they came face to face and at that time john byro's horse was with them and not only that he had a special way to be with the animals particularly the dogs and horses that we find here and we find that he was uh, also a very kind hearted individual because he repaired the broken wings of a robin bird so we can find love for animals and birds we can find in the nature of morat he could make them feel calm and safe he looked after the horse in such a manner that john byro found it better tempered and healthy on its return morat too seems fascinated with horses and isn't beyond bending the rules to get what he wants so like his elder brother uh, aram was also very much addicted 
to horses and just like his elder brother Morat he also loved horses perhaps he chooses not to tell Aram that he stole the horse to save Aram from trouble too now Morat was not selfish Morat was not very much interested to make Aram his partner in crime and that was the reason he decided to save Aram and so that the entire blame can be imposed on his shoulders Morat basically is a free spirited child of nature who enjoys being alive every time without thinking too much about the future Morat can be said to be a free spirited child of nature and he always wanted to be alive he does not he does have a conscience and hence chooses to return the horse when reminded of his family's honorable reputation but important thing was that morat also had a guilt conscience he felt guilty from inside inside and when he heard about the family's reputation of being truthful and honest he decided to give the horse back to its rightful owner that is john byro now the third important character is uncle koshrov now according to aram uncle koshrov the huge man with a large mustache and volatile temper seems similar to morad in spirit but not in blood they don't have any blood relationship as such but it seems that spiritually morad's behavior morad's antics had a good connection with that of uncle koshrov having left armenia uh, perforce koshrov feels as if his true home and part of his identity had been stripped away yes because we also find that in the story he doesn't bother to listen to john byro who had lost his horse that was the reason he retorted back to john byro by saying that we have lost our motherland that is greater than the loss of a single horse and it seems that always in his mind he had this particular thought that maybe he had no identity maybe his dignity and everything has been stripped away from him this leads to a lack of belonging to the new land of central valley california where the armenians have settled and a sense of frustrated anger thus he is commonly observed to roar every time and no one can argue with him as such and every time he used to say quote unquote it's no harm pay no attention to it or in other words you can say it is no matter pay no attention to it nothing is quite as important to him anymore and nothing quite as tragic or urgent because that was his nature that is the best way to describe uncle kostov was that nothing is quite as important to him anymore and nothing quite as tragic or urgent because anything that is tragic anything that is enjoyable both have the same emotional exuberance and or rather to say both displays the same emotional exuberance from uncle koshrov whether it's a tragedy or whether it is something related with the happy situation Un- i mean uh, uncle koshrov's antics uncle koshrov's behavior remains exactly identical or we can say exactly the same now the next important character is very important one it is the horse the horse is also a very important character uh, in this particular chapter in the armenian culture the white horse is quite significant it has a uh, huge significance it is a symbol of courage it is a symbol of purity in this story the horse ultimately becomes a symbol of the innocence of the boys as well as their captivated spirits because ultimately the horse is also symbolical what does it symbolizes it symbolizes the innocence of the boys their youthful vitality and energy and charm and also their uncaptivated spirits also on the other hand it establishes morad as a gifted child 
who can connect with animals and on the other hand proves that morad had the horse for quite some time before he brought it to aram we find that morad he used to love horses just like aram also used to do and not only that morad we find that he had developed connection with animals and birds and other important thing is that morad had the horse for quite some time before he thought that it is high time that we should return it back but before that he thought uh, that he should meet with aram and he should tell to aram about it he should show it to aram also now finally what message we do we get from this particular story the summer of the beautiful white horse what message do we get now the primary message is that despite social or economic challenges there are some truths which are absolute and should be practiced under and all condition and what is that it is undeniable that no one can deny the fact that the story is said within a family that is poor we should remember it that the garaglinian family is poor they are richest in terms of honesty and truthfulness and it is going on for the past 11 centuries but no one can deny the fact that the family is very much poor the story is set within the family that is very much poor all the families in the garaglinian family are a are poverty stricken they that is the reason their tribe is known as the poverty stricken tribe now let me move on dear students their poverty is not as a crutch or something that limits the emotional quotient of the boys or the people in the community the boys's love for the horse is genuine there is nothing selfish in it because ultimately aram had assured that neither his brother nor he would sell the horse for getting some monetary benefits they won't do that because their love for horse is genuine and their love for horse is also sincere not motivated out of some bad motive or ulterior motive of greed or economic want obviously they could have been tempted to sell the horse obviously their family is a poverty stricken family but as i told you right now dear students that they are very genuine and very sincere in their love for the horses they are not motivated by anything else other than to highly emotional reaction of wanting to make right what is wrong now that is something very important they are not motivated by anything other than the highly human reaction of wanting to make right what is wrong so one important thing that we should all remember the reaction of the horse owner john byro is also very real and valid because all of a sudden he saw his horse is in the barn previously uh, mysteriously from the barn it has been stolen he knows very well that the boys have taken the horse but gives multiple opportunities for the boys to recognize the consequences of their action because we can uh, read in between the lines that uh, we should know about one important thing that uh, uh, john byro already understood that uh, the horse is his horse but he tactfully played with their emotions and with their sentiments and ultimately because of been uh, severely broken from inside because of this guilt conscience morad and as well as adam or morad in the company of aram decided to give it to the rightful owner that is john byro ironically enough the owner shows a sense of charity and goodwill and this benefits him as the horse is much more manageable and well conditioned as a result of the boys work with the horse now one thing is for certain john byro was not a kind of a rough man he realized it very well that that particular horse is his horse even he checked the face and the mouth of the horse but he tried to behave as if he doesn't know anything about this horse 
and he told that might be this is a twin of his hearts but the important thing is that uh, when he got the hearts back he haven't forgotten uh, to show or to involve yourself in charitable work okay that is the reason we find that john byro very proudly communicates it to the narrator's mother that the stolen hearts mysteriously reappeared once again in his barn and now the hearts is better manageable and well conditioned finally in the final analysis related with this particular message that we get from the story we can say that even we examine the encounter of the boys the horse and the owner there is a trend that while economic hardships area strong factor is how we behave they are not a determinant one there is a realm of human actions that can lie outside the strictly casual world of economics the setting of the story seems to have been depression time in california which makes reading even more interesting yes the story is set during the time of depression one in california and that actually makes it more interesting economic hardships poverty all these things are there but uh, honesty integrity genuine love for the horses surpasses all these things and we can uh, critically evaluate and analyze that probably uh, the story setting of the story seems to be the depression time in california which makes reading even more interesting and even more engaging so dear students that ends my audio presentation kindly go through this audio presentation in your spare time and if you have any doubts let me know about it thank you students thank you all